All right, so this is going to be a short wrap-up of the Canon T4i. I already have videos talking about focusing with the, the continuous autofocus during video with the STM lenses and the non-STM lenses. I've got demos of those. I've got samples of the ISO at different ISOs for both still and video. Um, and I also have a video up uh, talking about the touchscreen and demoing the different touch screens that you get um, working through the menu system with a T4i. This is really kind of my overall thoughts of this uh, camera and generally I want to say I really like it. Uh, it's a nice little camera. I wasn't really excited about the touch screen but after using it for a week I have to say that's one of the nicest features. That along with the button placement on the back here really allows for I think multiple people to use this however they want. You can use it without touching the screen at all or you can use buttons and touchscreen or touchscreen solely and so they've done a really nice um, kind of a, a hybrid system there and I really appreciate that and I like it. It's good. Video and photo quality is excellent on the uh, photo side up to ISO 3200 perfectly usable. You could even go to 6400 on a pinch. Um, similar in the video side I pulled a still shot out of the, 19, uh, the 1080p video the other day and was just amazed by the clarity um, and quality of it. Really, really nice. The stereo audio on top, really happy with that. It's nice to not have to worry about putting a Rode mic on top. Battery life has been good, you know, around 500 shots over an hour of video, somewhere between an hour and two hours. The screen is bright and must draw a lot of power, but it's on par with Rebels of, of earlier models and things of that sort. And I think that's everything that I love about this. The bummers, um, kind of the big one is that that continu continuous autofocus really isn't that impressive yet. Um, it is slow and is not useful for any kind of fast movement. I saw somebody else write about it and said toddler speed and I think that's a great way to say it. If somebody's moving at a toddler or slower speed it can, it's certainly capable of focusing on them faster than that and it starts to be challenged bright light, large depth of field, you can kind of fake it, but in general, uh, not so impressive. It does defocus very nice and quietly with the STM lenses, um, and just the, S the 40 pancake in general is a really nice lens. I'll talk about that in a separate video. The only other bummer is um, there, there's just a slight lag with the touch screen coming on from time to time. It's probably only about a second, but there was an, uh, a couple of times where I'd hit a button and just enough to think that I did something wrong or I didn't actually hit the button and then it would appear. But really, the, and that last one is kind of a niggly point um, because it's, a, it's pretty small. But the continuous autofocus, that's kind of pretty big. Overall though, really nice camera, really happy with it. Wish it was about $100 to $200 left less to be a little bit more competitive with the Nikon D3200. Um, you are paying for this really nice articulated touchscreen. Uh, and the stereo audio. So that's the two big, if I had to give the two big features over the D3200, those are the ones I'd give. I'd love to hear your comments, your thoughts about this, or the D3200, or any of the other cameras that are out there in this price range right now. Please leave comments below, Facebook, on the blog, any of those places. And thank you for watching.